YouTube, what's up? It's Joe doing another uh, unboxing and uh, first impressions of the Cold Steel Swift One. Just got it in the mail this morning. Still sealed in the box. Gonna open it up. We got a lot to cover to dive in, so let's dive in. Gonna open it with uh, Gonzo. Let's get this bad boy opened up. Now, while I'm opening it, let me tell you. You ever have something that you've never tried before, like maybe a dish, uh, somebody made something, or you never had a certain, you know, whatever it is, and you just got a feeling you're going to like it? Well, this is the way I feel about this knife. My gut prior to opening it, I have a feeling I'm going to like it. So, hopefully I do. Let's take a look at it. So, first, right off the bat, very cool new packaging. Let's take you around it. The Swift... Seeing this for the first time. I like the new look. I think the old one was nice. Uh, oh, they still got the story on the back. The old one was nice, but it was getting a little aged. There's the barcode. Swift. Cold steel anytime, anywhere. I think that's a new saying by them, too. All right, so let's open this up. Oh, there's the side I wanted to show you. The Swift 1. Now, there is a Swift 2, but I'll tell you the difference, as far as I can recall. I'll tell you the difference once we get into the, this knife a little bit more. Uh, another clip for ambidextrous carry. Stick that back in the box. Now, this one is a loner, but uh, if all goes well, this might, not, this might be a, a keep. We'll see how it goes. But for now, we're going to treat it as a loner, so as a loner, we're not going to have any cut tests, unfortunately. So, let's open it up. Oh, well, granted, it's, I'm opening it up I like it's uh, not assisted but we're going, to, we're going to get through all that. First of all, let's wipe this thing off a little bit. Okay. Alright, let's get some of the stats out of the way. I said it's a cold steel Swift 1. The weight is 4.7 ounces. The blade is 3. Point... Now, here's the thing. The... I'm going to tell you the blade is 3.625. We're going to measure and check it out. But there are sites that mention that it's 4, four inches. Now, just a quick look. I would say it looks more like 4 inches than it does 3.625. But uh, we'll, we'll put it against the ruler in a second. Um, the steel, which I've mentioned in my other videos with cold steel, is uh, they've upgraded all their knives to do the carpenter steel. So this is the CTS HXP carpenter steel. They moved up from uh, uh, OS8. Uh, pocket clip ambidextrous, which I just showed you. Uh, the other clip that's in the in the box. Uh, assisted opening, uh, G10 handles, nice milled G10 handles. Uh, this is a collaboration between uh, Cold Steel and uh, knife maker Andrew Demko. It has a new, uh, it's called the Flash Tech Locking Mechanism. And overall length is 8.625. So let's go over it. So far, I'm liking it so far, but I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, this thing is shiny. Swift. It's a spear point blade. Feels very sharp. I'm digging this milled G10. Hopefully it's coming out good on the video here. Let's uh, fade back a little bit. Very nice. Your lanyard hole, nice pocket clip. Let's close it again to see about the centering. I'm going to look off camera. Um, centering might be just slightly off. Now let's see how it opens. I want to fade back so we can see how it opens. Should have done this the first time around. Hold on. There we go. 
opens very oh, very fast. You saw how that flew open like that? Very nice. Nice thumb stud. As my buddy SSR would say, there's some jimping on a thumb ramp. Not very intense jimping though. But it's there nonetheless. Let's go look around. I'll say one thing, it is definitely a fingerprint magnet, but I don't mind that because if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like satin and I like and I like um mirror, so something I'll live with. So let's measure it up. Let's put it against the trusty dollar as always. So there it is against the dollar. Um, let's put it against the, the ruler. Now let's check that blade. Yeah. I am going to say it's more towards 4 inch blade and not 3.625 like other like some sites are, are mentioning. Overall 8.625 and that's that's about right as you can see. Let me put it against another great offering from Cold Steel that I did a review on and if you have your annotations on, you'll see in the upper right corner. If not, I'll put it in the description. The Code Steel Code 4. Similar size. Let's put that away. Alright. G10 is very grippy, I'll say that. And that's what you want. You don't want your hands, in case you're working, you know, you don't want your, and then your hands are sweaty, or you're working outdoors, and maybe it's a little bit rainy out, you want it to be, you want to be able to grip the knife and not slip, and this is very grippy G10. Very nicely milled, nicely done by cold steel. There's that opening again flies open. If you're worried about it opening fast, I mean not opening it fast, you can put your worries to rest. It flies wide open. Now, let's see. Really tight to close, I must say. I had thought when I got this, I thought this was the uh, the triad lock, but I'm reading it's called a flash tech locking mechanism. So a bad opening myself there, but that was just me. Let's see. It's kind of like the triad lock. It's very, the spring is very, you need some serious effort, not not serious effort, but you need to, some effort there to, see, I'm, I'm opening it like a spaz. Hold on a second. There you go. Very strong to close. You can see the tension that's taken to, but once it's in place, there's the spine some more. Now this knife goes everywhere, I think about buck twenty-five, buck thirty, or most of your your knife sights. I think even uh, you can even eBay has got it going for that price. It's got like a two-tone. You can see here is not the same. Like here's satin, and here it's like a different tone right here. Very nice. Now, let's see. 
what can we say negative about it if there is anything negative doesn't mean you're always now again I'm just seeing it for the first time I haven't caught with it one could say negative would be you know it's a fingerprint magnet I did mention that and I'm being a dead horse that doesn't bother me um, one could say that the you know the closing being so so much tension to close it it does take an effort to close this knife there's no you can see the knife is just dying not to okay I'm the, I'm just doing it with a finger I mean it does close but that spring is rough it's it's strong um the one thing I might say negative now seeing let's put this back in the picture I've given this knife phenomenal reviews and a lot of people some of my subs some people just you know others have also given this knife phenomenal reviews this knife is great in its own way however this knife is seventy dollars this knife is almost twice as much now that in itself because we're dealing with the same company and you say you're on a limited budget uh, is this knife sixty dollars better than this knife now certain things you still can't close this one one hand I mean you can but you know not I why well, wouldn't you know same complaint as I've had with this the little complaint I mean yeah the, I think Stutter and Bob mentioned about closing it with one hand I'm not gonna do that especially with the K2 just ate up my thumb but by the way it, it, you can see my thumbs getting better <laughs> but uh, this does have the advantage of the assisted opening this doesn't you know this has the G10 handles this doesn't so you gotta think to yourself it's the same size same similar size uh, blade I mean granted two different blade shapes but similar size blade same kind of steel um, we know this one to be super sharp. I'm almost getting a guess say that this is probably sharp, sharp as well. Like I said, cold steel very rarely disappoints, and it feels super sharp. So, thing is, if you're in a market, are you really? Do you want to spend sixty dollars more for G10, uh, different locking system? But though it does to me it feels very similar to the uh, the triad lock, and um, and and uh, assisted opening. So that would probably be the one major negative is the price. But price aside, there was a lot to like about this knife. Very much. And going back to the original story that I said, um, when you like something, uh, you're going to try something for the first time, you just have a feeling you're going to like it. I do like this knife. I am going to still debate about the cost. Seeing that this one's 70 and this one has a couple of different improvements, you know, maybe the G10 would be considered an improvement, though I do like the feel of the, the aluminum handles here. Uh, the assisted opening is definitely an improvement. The locking system might be a different kind of improvement. I don't know. For me, they're similar. If maybe they are the same, just a different name with the same thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know, it, it resembles it to me in a lot of ways too. Look where the the screws all match up. So you have to come to your determination whether you feel that it's worth the extra sixty dollar purchase. I like it a lot. I do wish it was probably more along the lines of instead of a hundred and twenty five, hundred and thirty, ninety nine dollars I'll say. I'll go I'll go thirty dollars more for this knife. Uh, even still, I'm probably going to wind up buying this knife um, as a keeper. I'm going to debate it uh, still. Nice thumb stud. So, one would have to consider, and, and, and I'm, I'm getting into 14 minutes, I'm, I'm taking too long. But that's one thing you're going to have to consider. With with something like this, the Code 4 out, it makes you really think, you know, do you want to spend the extra $60 for what the, the, the little bit of improvements this one has? 
Now, as a knife collector, I'm probably going to buy it, but you know, if I was my budget was a hundred bucks, or if I had 130 and that's all to spend on knives, I might opt to get this one and have sixty dollars to spend on another knife. So let's get this one out of the picture. But like I said, I do like it a lot. I get that swift in there. There you go. There it is in the hand again. Fade back that. So zoom in for the final shot. There you have it. It's the oh before I get to the final my final uh, comment. Um, I said the difference between the one and the two. The basically the two is a black blade. I don't know if it's DLC coded, but that's the difference. Otherwise, it looks like it's the same knife. So this is the Cold Steel Swift One. Thanks a lot for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the video.